Hi, hello, hey, and welcome to episode 60. 60, baby. 60 of oh. Rushed Vibes. 60. I'm going to leave it there because I was. it was confirmed to me that my intro was corny. Who? Who said it was corny? Remember Sam said it needs work? No, she was talking about the, the video intro on YouTube. Oh. What's wrong with the video intro? She was saying we should do more like we should incorporate the kids, maybe images of us, no, like speaking. I'm tired of those damn kids. I mean, I am too, but. They're like in every other aspect of our lives. This I'm just is, telling you that's this what is she, for us. I'm telling you that's what she was referring to, oh. not not your eye. Hello. At least I don't think that's not what okay. she. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. here to rush the vibe with our tribe. Hey, tribe. How you doing? Who are you? Jessica Rush Tribe's rushing. And who am I? Dude, potentially an insecure man in this world. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> in this Where, world, that? Where did that come from? In this world full of sensitive and insecure men. No, this is David Rush vibes rushing. And we're here. And we are here to rush the vibe with, with our, our tribe. tribe. And it's a different kind of day because we both have mugs. We're because we're actually recording it sometime in the afternoon. Sometime in the daytime natural lighting but we do have the studio lights on and i'm breaking my my rule normally i don't have coffee past like noonish. ish wouldn't be the latest why my body just doesn't react well to coffee after a certain time of day usually because that means it's my second cup but i feel like you get coffee too much control over your life i feel like i didn't ask you for an assessment of mine and coffee's relationship Sounding real insecure. How me and coffee get along is between me and coffee. Sounding real insecure over there. Whatever. Buddy. Whatever. So, what's new? You know, we were, uh, we being me and Jessica, we were upstairs either this, either this morning or last night. And I asked her, uh, because it's been a while since I've been to the barber and had my, my hair retwisted. Uh, actually, since our trip to, where do we go? Vegas. Vegas. Yeah, since Vegas trip. So, I haven't really been back. So obviously I look a little, a little scraggly. Rough. Um, and I asked her because I, you know, I value my wife's opinion when it comes to how I look because more than likely she's going to go out with me. So I don't want her feeling like I look like a bum, thinking that people would perceive her to be like one of those women who settle for bums. It's not us. It's not her. So I said, "How do you like the facial hair that I have?" Not I didn't say beard because I know oh, it's not really beard. I just said, "How do you like this?" She was like, I don't like it. Just, she didn't like ease into the criticism. She didn't let me down lightly. She was like, I don't like it because your one side, it like doesn't connect. So it's just like an, it's like, av- it's like an avenue on your face. So now being the insecure man that I am, <laughs> I'm all sensitive on my face. So I'm, Do you need to sit on this side? of the- No. I don't. I got. I got. Well, it's, I, it fits because I got the the queen, the women behind me. So now I don't um, mean to create an insecurity in you. No, it's not. It's not. I'm just just having fun. Okay. But no, it was interesting because she was just, normally Jessica's like, mm, you know, it's you know, it could be. It could be. She was like, I don't like it. So I now like, I got. Now I, I got. Now I have to make sure that when I go see Terry, I'm like Terry, you got You got to take this off. I bro, like facial didn't like hair. It. I do appreciate a man with facial hair. It's just, but he's got like a whole whole patch that's just nothing there it's like not even like a single strand it just doesn't have any hair follicles so there's actually some little baby joints some little baby baby, anyway, baby not strands a single, not a single they've lost their uh they've lost their they've wandered away from the crowd so it's like so they're just, out here by themselves just take it all off give me the smooth shaving on the side keep the little goatee is that what that's called the little goatee this is facial hair i don't i don't um, get too caught up in it uh, normally I do shave it off, but like I said, I haven't been to the barber since Vegas, which at this point is, when did we go to Vegas? Was it May? May. It's been almost two months. May 12th? So. May 12th or 13th, something like that. Yeah, so that's what's new. But um, rocking my, my Bloodline t-shirt, shout out to the Tribal Chief. Get a good, get a good shot of that. I'm wearing my, my Angelo t-shirt. Oh, that bam. says. <laughs> Still, I rise. Got to be wearing my wrestling t-shirt and you got my Angelo over there. And you know why that's a significant poem to me? I don't know that I ever told you. So in high school, um, before I moved down here, so I did three years at South High in Worcester, Massachusetts. And Shout out to Worcester. And I was in the BSU, also known as the Black Student Union. So I want to say it was my sophomore year. It might have been my junior year. Um, 
we we do an annual Black Student Union show. So I recited Still I Rise um, in front of the entire school on stage in heels. And I still remember feeling like such a badass because it was a long, it's a long poem. And I had like this little choreography. And at the end, I remember going, because it, it ends with I rise, I rise, I rise. So I was like, I rise, I rise. I rise. Like, I, it's just such a, I don't know why I can like still feel myself on that stage and reciting it. So when I saw that Target had this shirt and it said, still I rise and it was Maya Angel, I had to get it. But yeah, so that's the significance of that yes. poem to me. That's um, cool. I worked really hard to memorize it and I did. And it's a really, it's a really good poem. If you've never really heard it or read it, go into it. Um, it's a good poem. Yeah, he was on him. Yeah, I was mm -hmm. 16. Oh. I mean, I know, but I'm just saying, it's heels, pretty big commitment. And it, I you mean, were committed at 16, to that. I could do heels. I went to school in heels. I would wear heels to school. You wore heels all day? Yeah. Why? It's different when you're 16. No, it's not. We like coordinate with our friends. You wearing heels, I'm wearing heels. And we'd wear heels, wear boots, whatever. And you have to walk up like bleachers and stuff in heels? Stairs, yeah. But I could do it. R.I.P. to your, to feel, your Achilles. I would feel different. I was like 70 pounds lighter. <laughs> Skinny, skinny Jess. Skin tea. Skinny vibes. Ooh, I was, I used to be so tiny. Yeah. Thank God those days are behind you. Because <laughs> I was, I was complimenting Jessica before we came on. I was telling her she looked good. She don't believe, she's like, I'll just stop it. No girl, you look good. As God intended, you are the perfect form. Thanks. Perfect. I, I, there's one thing I'll commit to for the rest of my life is letting you know how fine you look. Thank you. I appreciate it. You look it. fine. Don't do the falsetto. <laughs> Don't do it. I won't do it. Thank you. I won't do it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so your bloodline shirt, my, my entry shirt. Shout out to the tribal chief. Roman Reigns. Shout out to... Uh, you big just, big little brother Alan. You just complimented me, so I'm not going to get into my feelings on wrestling in this newfound obsession. It's not one, it's not an obsession, two, it's not newfound. It was just dormant. You know what my little brother did? He woke it up. You know what he did? And then he disappeared. He allowed it he allowed it to he, rise. <laughs> no, no. Don't do that. Don't don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. And you know, I was going I was looking back on uh I was on YouTube today because I've I've been off for the last couple of days, America, it's been fantastic. Just every day should be like a day off. <laughs> um, and I was looking at old uh, clips of what's uh, called the Attitude Era, which was WWF's, WWE, then known as WWF's, their, their peak. And it was just so crazy, like the crowd and the fans and the storytelling and the act. It was, it was just a beautiful culmination of just perfection coming together. Like, And of course, there was no social media back in the day. So if you missed it, and this is before like DVRs and stuff. You had to wait like for your reason. friends, no, your friends would catch you up. Like, you know, some kids would go to like the cafeteria before the first bell or whatever. Like mm -hmm. your friends, you there'd be a crowd of kids like talking about what happened the night before. Aww. Yeah, it was it was just it kind of took me back to the to That's the good cute. old days. But now you got social media, you got DVRs, you got apps and mm -hmm. stuff. You can just go back and watch it. But yeah, it was it was cool. I remember uh there was a period of time where I wasn't allowed to watch wrestling growing up, but once my parents didn't care, I had a TV in my room, but I had a, I had a bedtime. This is like middle school. Don't so tell me you were sneaking and watching TV. I, was, I would sneak, not only would I sneak and watch it, but I would put like the little towel under my door. <laughs> my parents couldn't see the, the blue light uh, emitting from the, from the TV. I was committed. I had, yeah. had the volume on like one, which is I couldn't really hear it. So I have to, I would watch it and then. You didn't do closed caption? Nah. Oh, I should have done closed caption. I should have, but. Um, then you sometimes never got caught? I don't think so. I think at some point they kind of knew, but they would just be just like, whatever. It yeah, it's like, whatever. Uh, but those shows used to go long. I mean, they used to go to like 10, 11 o'clock, I think 10 o'clock at night, 10 or 11. They got to be up to go to school. And that was, that was late for me. It's, I mean, it's been late my whole life because I'm an old man, but good times. And, but now I can go back and relive those moments on YouTube and streaming apps and stuff. It's, it's good. Cool. It's good. Um, Speaking of uh, old things, <clears throat> you know, uh, last week's episode where we uh, 
happened to just fall into a discussion on uh, fatherhood. That and was last week. That was last week. And then uh, it kind of deviated to, uh, in your words, uh, how men, fathers, uh, are giving pray are given praise when they're doing what would seem to be the bare minimum of what is required, just doing their duties, and they seem to get more praise than mothers. And uh, we put a we we put a reel together of that clip. Um, it was a it was extended part of the episode. It was the meat of the episode. So if anybody who's seen the clip maybe felt some kind of way about it. I encourage you to go watch the full episode on YouTube because you may get more context because it was probably about like a 20, that was a 20 minute portion of our mm-hmm. entire episode. So it was, it was an extended discussion. So I encourage people to go watch it. And it's also a plug to go back and watch the episodes, get us some views, please. But share it and share it. But, uh, we put a clip out, we put a reel out on Instagram and it was, it was all Jessica and she was just saying how, well, I won't speak for you. The clip is out there. Go watch it. But this would be a great opportunity for to insert the clip. To insert. Oh, so but you I'll, won't remember. Uh, I'll insert. Yeah, I'll insert the clip right here. Pause. I just think men have been able to get away with the bare minute with just below the bare minimum so that when you do the bare minimum, it's like, oh, my gosh. But it's like the bar for which you're being said to be a great dad. I feel like is just your responsibility as a parent. Like I remember I was telling someone a friend of mine, I was like, oh yeah, um, I think I had fallen back asleep with Sonoma and David had taken the girls to daycare and camp. And I, and they were like, oh, David's such a good dad. And I was like, for transporting his kids to the place they need to be? Not taking away from the fact that you are a good dad, but I think so many people, and maybe it's a matter of so many people are so used to whatever the definition of a not great dad is that anything that is opposite that, that a man does for his children defaults as, Oh, he's a great dad. And it's kind of frustrating as a mom because yes, I get compliments and I'm a great mom. You're a good mom and all of this, but like, I'm just doing my mom duties. Like I'm just, Mm. you know, being like, I brought these people into the world. They didn't ask to be here. It is my responsibility to care for them. But it's like the burden is heavier on moms and the praise is greater on dads. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, that clip got viewed like over 6,000 times. And it got, it got a lot of comments. Uh, but I noticed it was very polarizing. Like either people all the way agreed with Jessica or they all the way disagreed with her. So I wanted to give you an opportunity, should you feel it necessary, to uh, elaborate or... Uh, confirm (laughs) your thoughts because i feel like uh we had a friend who shared some messages she had received after she shared the video and it it was from from men who felt um just uh, they disagreed and and felt like you know it was i won't put words in the mouth but felt like it was disrespectful or whatever but blah 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 um so i wanted to kind of give you an opportunity to kind of address what you meant, unless you feel what you said should stand on its own. And then by all means, we can just get into the episode. But yeah, uh, I definitely feel like what I said holds true. Uh, I do think that people half listen because a lot of people were just, I disagree or I rocked with her until. And that's the problem with where we are in this time in 2022. We don't really we listen to respond we don't actually listen to hear and absorb like where is she coming from so like one i think it was a woman had commented and said what kind of men is she around and oh. and again it's she a, almost got dealt with she did because i i will say <laughs> i have been around great men um there are three significant men in my life and they took fatherhood to exemplary levels and so it has really nothing to do with the fathers who are who directly impact my life it's more so what i've seen friends who have kids friends who are in relationships um but i think there are probably two types of people people who could hear that small clip and understand and infer where i was going to and people who 
partially listened to that clip and needed to maybe go back and hear the entire segment. Um, but I don't, I don't think that I need to, I think a lot of the messages and feedback that I did see from males, uh, women seem to get it. They were like, agree, heart, fire, this. Yes. Yes, queen. Um, I think, I think I should have, you should have like put trigger warning because people were triggered. And I think it might've been because they might recognize that maybe they do only participate in the bare minimum of parenting. And it was a call out to them. Um, I think that's why people usually get defensive because if you if you know as a dad you're doing everything that you need to do as a father to to do your part like why why go out of your way and there was one there was one comment oh what did he say he had said like, somebody was like somebody was like not with this shit again <laughs> yeah and i was just like sir <laughs> just keep going um and also well, the, man, my man has had enough of this discussion all clearly right he has I'm but it's like what are, it. what are, let me talk to your woman but there was the one guy who was like oh that's a lie because mothers they come and they roll out the red carpet and you know fathers get the macaroni and whatnot that was actually kind of funny it, it was funny but i don't know it's part of why i usually go extra for father's day because one i recognize that father's day is outside of the school year so a lot of times like there's no fun card made at school by mm -hmm. your kid. Um, That's a good point. Like even daycare, like both girls, like Mother's Day, they make stuff for me. I noticed like Mahalia never really does anything for Father's yeah, Day. Yeah, Mahalia, we're going to have a conversation for, about for that because I, I didn't even notice it, but I, and I I'm observed on you. it. The jig is up. So so I I would like to think that obviously I'm biased. I'm a woman. I'm a mother. But I, I would like to think I recognize where we do fall short in terms of recognizing dads. And if I need to improve in terms of recognizing you, I can definitely work towards that. But I will still. I got still a list. Let me get it. Let me know when out. I when well, I can get no, it to you. Because I always be like, what, where do I need to improve? <laughs> Give me some constructive freak feedback, and you're like, oh no, baby, you're great. You are great, baby. And I'd be like, so the best of here's my scroll the best of all of the, the best. things I need you to improve on. Yeah. But yeah, no, I stand by what I said. I recognize that it triggered some men, but I really think that it 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 should trigger a thought of am I really contributing to my household to fatherhood to my children as much as I should be not saying that mothers are greater like um in the conversation with the screenshots the one guy was like I work so you know she's gonna clean more diapers and it's like I mean even if you work just because you work that doesn't disqualify the amount that you do in the home because you still return to this space so I just think that there are a lot of misconceptions in terms of the structure of how a household should run. But I say that in terms of this is my household. This is our relationship. I can't speak for what works for, you know, Sally and Ben. You know, they have decided the dynamic of their relationship, of their marriage. But I do know that there are a lot of women who are just like, dude gave his kid a popsicle. And everyone's like, woo, great dad. And she's, you know, hair a mess hasn't rested exhausted and yeah maybe mother's day comes and the dad gets a diamond ring for her or whatever jewelry the kids make all of these stuff flowers great but it's just one day out of 300 and i'll say 364 because you know you got birthdays and your birthday and your mother's day christmas whatever um so no i don't i won't change anything that i said i stand by that and i think i i was actually like really impressed with how i delivered it and i was actually really impressed with uh how it was put together how it was edited and yeah, everything I, whoever I did a, whoever I did a really good job providing um substance for whoever someone. our uh social media manager is they're doing a really good job because we got 10k 10 over 10,000 views on our first two reels yeah it was pretty impressive which you know compared to some other bigger accounts isn't a lot but our first first, first two reels two out the reels, gate season two i feel like that's that's pretty impressive no sponsors open to sponsors yeah, I uh, am one commend you uh, because even as what most people didn't see in that reel, obviously, because it's only 90 seconds, is that it was a it was more of a back and forth type of conversation. And while um, I saw, understood and received your point of view, because you were speaking as a woman, as a mother, as, as a wife, I wanted to speak from uh, a man, father. Uh, husband perspective and especially one thing I wanted to bring up was conversations I've had 
with men who didn't have fathers Mm -hmm. and they've talked to me about struggles they have with you know guidance in terms of decision making and and how to how to raise their kids and whatnot or how to help raise their kids or raise their kids alongside their partner so what's funny about it is here i am man husband father uh sitting here with you and you delivering like i was the first one to hear those words before anybody else heard them and I didn't have no problem with it mm-hmm. because I'm secure in who I am as a father, as a husband. Um, and I also understand that as my wife saying these things that she doesn't feel as a mother and maybe speaking for moms in general, or at least mothers in her inner circle in her network, how they don't feel appreciated enough for doing being moms, but it being way more draining and being way more responsibility and how the kids always go to moms for stuff saying how they don't feel like they get the praise that fathers do when they, it, the perception would be that fathers receive a whole lot less. And I'm able to take that and understand that you're not attacking me per se. Mm-hmm. You're attacking society's the way society reacts to the two examples when they see them, they were like, Oh yay, dad popsicle. And then it's like, Oh, well she's a mom. Like you're supposed to, breastfeed and you're supposed to be Mm -hmm. tired it's supposed to take your body however many months to recover after having a baby like that's just the way it is you're supposed to take the trash from this popsicle that dad just gave me you're blame god it's god's fault this is the way god intended so yeah and i was able to receive that and honestly what i was thinking about uh before we sat down was like if you're and this is even speaking for me like if you as as my wife as as the mother of my my three beautiful daughters are feeling unappreciated that's an indictment on me um, and so like you're saying, maybe some, some men heard it and they were like, it was like, you said a wake up call because there's no way that I shouldn't, there's no way that you as my wife should feel like you're not getting enough praise. Even if you're doing the bare minimum, even if you're doing the things that you're supposed to do, I should still be hyping you up. Like I should be your biggest cheerleader. Like I should be in the back gassing you up. And if you're saying you don't feel like that's happening. Like you're not getting the praise and that's, that's, that's on me. Like I got to do a better job. Well, I'm not like, forget. saying that. I know, okay. but I'm saying like, if, if you clarify. were, I don't want people yeah, to yeah, yeah. that you're not, if you, if you were, um, but it, it made me think, right. It, like you said, it, it, it sparked thought in me. It was like, well, am I doing enough? And, um, where could I be better? Um, and like, like how we started, I, I regularly compliment you on how you look, because I think it's important not just when you step out to an event to tell and remind your woman how beautiful she is. It's moments where she's just getting up like moments when she's in the middle of her work day, sitting at her desk, stressed out because she's on these damn meetings. Like there's no, like you, you should be able to compliment your partner at any time, like throughout the day, no matter what state they're in, in terms of their attire or whatever. And I make that a point, but I thought, well, am I doing it enough? Like when she's having those, little innocent moments with the girls or one of the girls and I'm being like, yo, I, I think that's really awesome that you're doing that with Solace. Or I think that's really awesome that you're doing that with the girls or just taking pictures and sending them to you. Like, do I do that enough? So I, I think it was healthy. Um, I think it was, um, it was good to hear that perspective. Obviously you said like, Oh, well, you know, dads, they get praise for doing nothing, but I've never heard you elaborate on your thoughts before. So it's a lot different just to kind of make the comment. Cause it's like, man, whatever. But when you, you say it and then you, you expand and you kind of dive into how you arrive at that opinion. Um, it's good to know. It's a good perspective. Um, and people reacting to it, like you said, if you're doing, if you're being the best partner, so assuming in a heterosexual relationship, if you're being the best husband and father for your kids, um, and best husband for your wife, then that shouldn't, shouldn't bother you. Uh, and, and I think it, it just, again, speaks to the inability of people to hear something that they either disagree with or something that doesn't necessarily apply to them uh, and not uh, overreact. Like just because you put a clip out saying the dads are able to get away, have been able to get away uh, with the bare minimum as it pertains to society's perception of them when it comes to fatherhood doesn't mean you're attacking Mm-mm. like every single man out there. Uh, and I don't feel like you were attacking men. And I don't feel like it was an attack number one, but I don't think you were speaking directly to men. I felt like you were speaking more to society and how Mm -hmm. they perceive uh, fathers who are doing, 
you know, these day-to-day things that they're supposed to do, their responsibilities and how society perceives mothers um, and how they speak about each example. Um, so even though I took account, even though I took a bit of a counterpoint in terms of saying, well, what if, you know, I won everybody should have encouragement, which I think you agree on, but also we shouldn't take for granted that someone is doing what they're supposed to do. Therefore they don't deserve praise because they may not actually know that what they're doing is what they're supposed to do because they may not have had an example uh, growing up. Um, I was still able to receive what you were saying and actually agree with most of it. Um, so it was just interesting kind of seeing the reaction to it, but I'm glad that you feel like you don't need to, um, elaborate or anything. Yeah, I stand by it. And I stand by it. Like I said, I, up to 32 years of my life, I, there are three significant fathers that I've had and I've had influence, been influenced by, and they were, they, they, they set the bar there. Were they perfect? No, but they gave me an example of fatherhood, which is why the bar that I have is so high. Oh, you weren't talking about me when you said the example no, first. I am, ex- I am including you. Oh, okay. Cause I was, I was like, you're like, there are three, three fathers. And yeah. I was like, yes, I know. I recognize I use past tense, but okay. I'm, I'm referencing my father, your father and you. Okay, great. Um, I thought I was celebrating too early. As a, no, as a, who are significant fathers in my life, sure. um, who I've seen, you know, there was a season where my mom was essentially the breadwinner. My dad was pastoring a church, but he was a stay at home dad. Like he was taking care of us while my mom was out working, you know, cooking the meals, cleaning the house. Um, but you know, so I, that's why I was kind of annoyed when I saw the con- what kind of dads has she been around? Cause I wanted to, I chose not to respond to anybody's comment. I mean, I liked the nice ones, but I really <laughs> wanted to be like, I've been around some amazing fathers. Yeah. Like again, my dad is far from perfect, but when it came to like sacrificing and providing and doing what he could while, while we were in our, you know, developing years, my dad did an amazing job. Yeah. Um, your father, I mean, he's been in my life for 10 years, but it's more, no, it's 11 years now. Um, excuse me. But you know, he, he's been, he's impacted me and he took me in as a child. And to the extent that sometimes, you know, people think that he's my biological father and don't recognize that, you know, no, he's, I, he's my married, my father by marriage. Um, and then there's, it's because the, he picks up your FaceTime calls it's, it and, is, he, ignores and mine. he has a significant love for me. And we just have this, this very interesting relationship and bond, um, that I don't even know I could put to words. And if I tried, I'd probably get all teary eyed. So I don't want to do that right now, Aww. but, um, you how know, sweet he he's a significant father and just hearing the stories of how he was when you were a kid and how he is now and being able to see totally different dude yeah see the growth and obviously i wasn't there to witness it 20 no. years ago but seeing the growth and just seeing how he interacts with seeing fatherhood on a different level being from the grandfather level like that's significant to me as well and then there's you who you know you came in and then there's me and then there's you there's david I mean, you stepped in like I remember the moment I told you I was pregnant with Solace and I was mortified. Like, I didn't know how you were going to respond. And you were just kind of like, OK, like we got this. And I was just like, what are we going to do? How are we going to have like, how are we going to raise a kid? And you were just like you were like excited. And I was so unhappy. Like you at one point were like, look, we're clearly having this kid. You need to change your attitude. Like, I remember you having that conversation with me and you've just embraced and walked into fatherhood. So for I'm sure somebody's assuming like, oh, her dad was probably, you know, no good, wasn't around. And I've been around like some some bad dads, but the ones who have impacted my life directly were amazing, which is why I hold such a high standard for fathers, because I think society has chosen to let men to not hold men to a high level when it comes to certain things. Oh, the boardroom, office, business, those type of things. It's like, oh, a man can handle this, you know, strength, bravado, uh, machismo, all of those things. But it's like something about parents and domestic life. We think men aren't capable. And so I think that's why people make a big deal when men do the smallest thing. And I'm just like, no, like I know men are capable of this. I've witnessed men who are the bread like who are the the whole housemaker the homemaker and they take care of the kids and they get them where they need to be and they cook and they clean and they do all that so 
where I was going from with that statement was we need to stop babying men. And, you know, we have instances where it's like men are like, oh, I don't feel like a man. Make me feel like a man. But it's not all about like muscle and bravado. Sometimes it is being able to do the domestic thing and taking care of well, kids. Well, you definitely know it's not all about muscle because <laughs> I, I ain't got it. Not Ooh, in my uh, a little flex. Not, not in my gene pool. So, yeah. So, I mean, we don't have to have that conversation all over again. Yeah. But, yeah, that's I. I stand behind so it so i i stand i, I guarantee stand it's firmly. like blue magic you know that one commercial where they're like we <laughs> stand don't stand behind, behind our windows we stand on them yeah i yeah. stand on my statement i'm not i'm not gonna budge good so if you got a problem with it come at me bro yeah just make sure you subscribe while you come in there <laughs> and share it share it and then come at me share it and then trash it so it gets good all engagement is good engagement good baby engagement anyway so you mentioned something uh -oh. um about uh, men needing like it's just like men have to feel strong or, or something like that um, and it made me think of something um, there's a clip <clears throat> <laughs> that uh, I caught wind of I think it was yesterday and watched it and um, it was a clip of T.D. Jakes Bishop T.D. Jakes, excuse me. All due to not to be confused. All due respect. Not not, not, not T.D. Jakes from down the street. Bishop T.D. Jakes. Texas, right? Is that where he is? He's in Texas. I guess so. I thought he was in Atlanta forever. In but I guess, yeah, he is in Texas. Um, speaking about, uh, it's a very short clip. It's part of what's interesting is uh, I noticed in the clip, that it had uh, the words Father's Day yes. behind him. So it was a part of his Father's Day sermon. Um, and part of this clip, uh, T.D. Jakes talks about, uh, and I won't speak verbatim, I'll run the clip after I introduce it. Insert clip here. And not yet, but clip will be inserted. And uh, he basically said, um, men need women to need them. So therefore, the society has taught women that they need to be men and men like and be, what did he, what did he, he said, tough and rough and growling and stuff and then raise raise the corporate ladder but we're losing our families and i think that was the line that set a lot of people on social media off and yes they did go off on social media so i'm a, we're gonna watch it here i'll edit it as if it's just playing and we're watching it so you can just in case you're a little fuzzy on it mm -hmm. uh and then we'll we'll come back and we'll talk about it so we'll play it for you guys and then we'll uh we'll be right back so i'm gonna play it Stay now tuned. play it now This breaks all sociological order that the culture we're living in now. Because we are raising up women to be men. And you are not applauded for your femininity. You are applauded in the contemporary society by how tough, rough, nasty, mean, aggressive, hateful, possessive you are and you are climbing the corporate ladder, but we are losing our families. I know you can buy your own car. I know you can buy your own house, but until you create a need that I can pour into, I have no place in your life. So stop coming home bragging to me about how much you don't need me and wonder why I shy away. Oh, y'all ain't gonna talk back to me this morning. So. My wife. Uh, thoughts. <sighs> It's like Christmas morning because there's so much to unpack. Well, open your presents. Have at it. So first of all, like I read a couple of the comments and somebody had said, what happened to a woman that art loose? <laughs> And that took me out because I was like, he really did have like a whole movie series and book and campaign about women that are loose. So I, um, I take this as an insecurity. I think 
and and he used some words that I th- it's tricky because you have to separate the Christian or the the biblical definitions with even that I I have like a slew of attacks in there um and then the secular the you know he said contemporary he used a, cu- a couple other words um that are exclusive to like just the world i have a huge issue with men having an issue with women that are self-sustaining i am the mother of three daughters my intention is to raise them to not need a man i don't think it is necessary for someone to need i don't like i don't like the idea that a woman needs a man society has built us to think you know for to be a complete woman you have a husband you have children you're that that's that's the fulfillment that's not i want my my children to need purpose and i want them our, to, our children oh sorry i want my daughters okay. our daughters to to have purpose to need purpose to need air water health but i don't want them to need a man and i say that expecting that you know should they choose they'll grow up they'll fall in love and all of that but we are in a different place we are in you know that era where you you had a daughter and then your hope was that she gets married to a wealthy man and he takes care of her I don't I don't want that for my kids. If they marry wealthy, that's great. But I want them to be self-sustaining. And I would do the same thing if I had a son. If I had a son, my intention was always I'm going to make sure you know how to cook, how to clean because I don't want my I wouldn't have wanted my son to need a woman. I would want my son to be capable of providing and surviving for himself. But we're talking specifically on women. I don't like that when culture shifts, it's the woman's issue <clears throat> why are we not challenging men to step up if we have women who are sub- biblically supposed to be the weaker vessel which the definition of that i i don't see it as weaker in terms of not as strong i see it in more of a she's carrying more like she's the weaker vessel because she's going to have to bear the the support of the household in terms of nurturing domestic caring for kids birthing kids all of that um so if men are not at the caliber to support women that are self-sustaining then it's work that needs to be done to the men not the women and i think it kind of goes back to my statement about dads where for a long time the value of a man was how much do you make you have a job and that's that's literally you're good looking you have a job that's literally all that you have to bring and then women it was just you know is she is she good looking and can she bear children that that was it and for a time not saying that that's right or that's wrong but that was just that was it you know women you were born you had the few that were like i want to be a lawyer a doctor i want to be more but for the most part we were groomed to breed you get married you breed but we are in a place where and we're still not 100 percent there but we're recognizing that women are capable we are capable of being in the boardroom we're capable of working we are you okay i cut i went to reach and i'm fine go ahead you cut yourself on what the my the skin Ooh. cubicle whatever it got caught on the thread of the chair so it just Ooh. it's leaking a little bit i'm okay okay um, I'm, a, I'm a tough man <laughs> so women we are capable and it's a good thing that we're capable we are intelligent and yes we are able to get our own homes buy our own cars buy our own food if we don't want to cook you whatever doordash doordash um hire cleaners all of these things and i think it's just men are recognizing a lot of men are recognizing that what used to be what made them a prize is no longer significant. If all you're bringing to the table is money, well, I have my money. I don't need your money, which means if we're going off of what he's saying, if you don't have a need for me, well, then make yourself necessary in her life. Mm. What else can you bring? Mm. Sometimes it might be cooking, cleaning. Maybe it's just emotional support. Mm -hmm. But 
I think it's just men are in a lot of men are insecure and they're insecure because women are calling them out or recognizing their BS, which is why a lot of people say older men are going for younger women because they're not at the maturity level to recognize. Older men have always gone after young women. They have, but it could simply <laughs> be just... because they're like, they're not mature enough to recognize that I ain't squat. So I stand by none of what he said. I don't think, I think it's an exaggeration that women you are. Re- you dare sit there and reject the Bishop T.D. Jakes? Reject out of turn. <laughs> Isn't that what you always say? Just jack that out of hand. Out of hand, out of turn. Mm-hmm. Get out of here with that mess. I, 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 I don't like it. I don't like that it's the woman's fault that we don't have families when there are plenty of men who start families and then go and start another family. It, it's. Yeah, we were just talking about that earlier. Were we? About a friend who had a husband who. Yes, exactly. Uh, so yeah. it's not. It's it's almost as if when things aren't going the way. When women are becoming too strong, I think it's the same. It, 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 it's it's the foundation of all issues in this in this world. When a group that's supposed to be supposed to be marginalized, that's supposed to be lower class, become recognize their capability and their strength, we have to find a way to make them at fault. And I think that's part of why we have all these reproductive rights issues and stuff, because you have groups that want to control women to a certain way. There are genuinely men who are still out here who see women as you marry them, you have sex with them, you make babies with them, and they're supposed to keep the house. I recognize that that's the dynamic for some relationships. Some some women, you know, they're just like, I want to be a homemaker. I want to have kids. I want, and that's perfectly fine. I respect that. Traditional, some might say. Yes, that's fine. I respect that. I'm not talking to you. Like, don't listen. Listen, right. but don't get into it. Don't come defending or anything, because this conversation is not about you. I think what you meant to say is, the thoughts and opinions expressed by Jessica are not <laughs> indicative of the greater views of us here at Rush Vibes. They belong to Jessica and Jessica alone. Anyway, I just think men are a lot more insecure than they like to put on. And knowing that the control, they don't have control over a woman because of what monetarily they bring to the table scares them. So then they blame it on the women. That's why we don't have families. No, you don't have families because you as a man are not willing to step up and actually meet her at the level she is. You want to stay here. From the outside, a woman that's here is appealing to you. But when you get her, you want her to lower herself so that you can feel like a man when you really don't even know what the definition of a man is. And I think until we get to a place where we recognize it's not about money. Like, and we, and I, I, I hope you're comfortable. I'm sure you're comfortable with, with me saying this because you're not an insecure man to my knowledge. But we've had instances where I've made more money than you and it's never been an issue. Yeah, we'll joke about it. We've also had a season where I wasn't working and you were the breadwinner and we were fully dependent on you. But you never made me feel like all I do, I'm the provider and you're just a wife. You're just Mm -hmm. here to take care of the kids. You still contributed. You still, because that's your job. So if men aren't taught that they need to do more, and if also women don't hold them to a standard and it right. has to be like a universal standard, it can't just be like a couple of these women are holding you to a standard. All women have to hold you to the same standard. Then you're going to keep having these men who are going to find women to be a threat when we're not a threat. You're just not stepping up and do coming to my level. So that's in a nutshell. But as the <laughs> resident male, by all means, mm-hmm. pressure. Um, so I have a couple, I have a couple of thoughts. Okay. A few, a few thoughts actually. One, um, uh, when he spoke of woman needing a man, I think it's important to say he was speaking within the context of a marriage, um, mm-hmm. and Christian marriage, obviously. So there's, there's that dynamic. Um, and I think it's in a marriage, you, you do need your partner, right? You need like I need you and you need me because it's, it's a partnership. So, um, I'm mad. I imagine he was framing at least that comment around the, uh, the context of a Christian marriage, Christian married couple. Um, so I have to, I have to make a confession. 
I saw this and I saw the reaction to it. And I do, I do take exception to uh, the part about women being mean and tough and whatever and climbing the corporate ladder and then losing uh, while we're losing our families. As you said, that clip standing on its own, you would, would lead you to think that he was blaming women and not holding men accountable. Uh, the problem with clips is that they lack context. Um, and mostly someone can just take any clip from anything, a Rush mm-hmm. Vibes episode, T.D. Jake sermon, um, and, and package it in such a way that it's really inflammatory, which this was. Seemingly. So I actually went and looked up. I was going to say, is this the part where you say you actually went, went and looked up the, the entire sermon. sermon, expecting it to be just as bad, right? Um, but what wasn't covered and what wasn't offered in the context of any posts that share the video um, was that he was actually, because it's a Father's Day sermon, he was actually speaking to men. Fathers. That just happened to be a piece where he was speaking to women, but it was part of a larger point in that, like when you, you actually said it, you said instead of needing women to lower themselves, why not ask men to step up? Well, part of his argument that he, or part of his, his sermon that he expanded into after this clip was you need, as men, you need to pour into your family so that, so like your sons, so that your sons can pour into their women. But if you're not around, your son is empty, essentially. And you get, you can't, pour an empty an son empty can't pour into, and if you think about it from, from an anatomy standpoint, men do need women, right? Because I can't make a baby on my own. Mm-hmm. I have to... <laughs> Pour into, pour into you so that you can make a child. So you take what I give you and you make it better. You mm-hmm. make it more extraordinary, which motherhood and, and uh, the birth of a child is an extraordinary thing, something I can't do. So I need you to do that. But if I'm not around and men aren't around and they jump into relationships and they, and they, they're, they aren't ready, they aren't mature because they don't have that example. And women become jaded and they reject men because all the men I've been with are exactly mm-hmm. the same. They're empty. They have nothing to give me. So I'm going to go do it myself. So if you're a woman who's been heartbroken and, and disappointed and disrespected time and time again from empty men, yeah, you're going to be like, I got my own because I'm the only one I can depend on. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go out here. I'm going to get this money. I'm going to go out here. I'm going to be self-sustaining. No, nah, I'm not interested in men because no man that I've been with has offered me anything. He's never added to me. He's never been able to give me anything to help grow. So the result of that is what do you lose? You lose a family dynamic because there's a woman out there not who feels like she doesn't need or want a man. Mm-hmm. So that was more of where he was coming from. Now, <laughs> I don't necessarily agree with um, the society part where where we're raising women to be men. Mm-hmm. I but I think that, that I, and if that's an attack on some of the other things that are going on in terms of, you know, transgender and, and whatnot, I don't agree with that. I reject that. But I, I, what I what I hope and what I think is that he was attaching that to the effects of empty men coming in contact with women and not giving them anything. So then women become jaded. They become disrespected. They become untrust, un, not tr- un, untrusting um, of men. So they, they do everything on their own. Mm-hmm. So that's part of the full clip. I wanted to see what your reaction was because I was interested in what you would see, how you would react to just that. And then how you would react if you had the greater context. Um, I still think it, did I pass? <laughs> well, you you reacted as I thought you would, um, but I think I still th- you know who am I to sit here and talk about you know how TD Jake should deliver sermons? But I think it could have been delivered that that part mm-hmm. could have been done differently. But again, you know when you're up there speaking. Um, and when you're trying to really hammer home a point, what do you got to do? You got to get people's attention. Sometimes you got to get people riled up to get their attention. Like you found out this last week. Um, and when I was putting your reel together, I started with the line, your, your quote, men have been able to get over the bare minimum because that's a capturing mm. like statement. If you're a woman, you're like, girl, hell yeah. If you're a man, you're like, man, what, what is this chick talking about? 
So whether you have either reaction, you're still more than likely to watch to see what this is all about. Um, so yeah, but it was interesting. And, and, you know, there are people who, who saw that and, um, you know, have said, you know, this was wrong with the church and, you know, patriarchal, you know, uh, values that, you know, persist throughout the church. And, um, why aren't people talking about men and, and, and how they start families and, and leave mm-hmm. and aren't around and all that stuff is, is fair, I guess, uh, depending upon how you're, what you're looking at. Um, but I think it's, I, I think it's important to use this as an example that you may still disagree with his entire premise, but it is important when you see these clips when you see these things that people are getting all up in arms about to go look and and look at the full subject matter in which people are talking about from which viral clips come from Mm -hmm. so that you can make a better informed decision and not just have a knee jerk reaction. Um, But it's funny that everything, every counterpoint you had to what he said was exactly what he actually went into. So I think that means he's probably more in tune uh, and more uh, aware of where shortcomings of men are. Um, even though, like I said, uh, there's still a couple of packaging mm-hmm. uh, decisions he made that, that I would, that I, I wouldn't have done myself. Uh, but yeah, that's yeah. it. Good to know. Well, I will say I'll give you your kudos cause you're always good about, you probably should have been like an actual journalist or something like a investigator. I was for a time. But like an investigative was not professionally. I didn't, I didn't get paid for it. Um, because you, you do always make a good effort of going beyond. Like, I'm very much so, I think it was Pastor Gray. She used to be like, I'm fire, ready, aim. And you're, <laughs> you're ready, aim, fire. So, like, yeah. I just shoot and then figure out, like, oh, where's the target? Um, <laughs> and you're, you're, you're very deductive in terms of, like, processing and co- being cognitive and trying to make sure going beyond the scope of what we see. So I will give you kudos for that. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm, I can be very, don't get twisted. You can also be very reactionary. I appreciate, but, um, I appreciate but that. But for the most part, when it comes to doing additional research and making sure like, hmm, this isn't enough. There's got to be more to this. What's the context outside of this? I, it wouldn't, it didn't even dawn on me to go and look and see what else he said before or behind that. It was more so like, I know this didn't just say <laughs> all of this about women because- I'm a, I, I would say that to an extent, I'm the epitome of the woman he described. All right. You know, I, I, I would say I didn't necessarily need a man. Um, I never went out like seeking like, Oh, just love me, marry me. I mean, I did, but I didn't. Um, but I was, you know, I had a job, I had jobs, I had my own apartment, I had my own car. So like I was self-sustaining. So then you needed to find a way to be valued because what you would bring normally based off of what society would expect, I already had that. So it's like, but I think it just, it's a new challenge that men have to face. Like what is another way I can be a necessary part of this person's life? So (sighs) interesting. Yeah. And it's just so fascinating that it was a clip from like, several months ago or i guess the father's yeah, day was father's now? day was last month it's it feels father's day feels like forever ago yeah, life feels like forever ago um when somebody i guess had an agenda or so i happened to be watching it I was like mm-hmm. man let me let me cut and splice this and send this out it was probably the chaos mm-hmm. well yeah but yeah i uh and like i said you met someone may still go and, and watch the entire i didn't even finish it but i got through the bulk of it may still watch it and, and still disagree, mm-hmm. which obviously that's everybody's right. You know, not no two people are going to think exactly the same um, or receive things exactly the same. But I think it does help to understand the smaller part that may be highlighted of a, of a larger point or argument. Um, so yeah, I saw it because even I, when I, when I watched it, I was like, dang TD. You should like, wow. Better. Like people, you said this in church and wiping that, your sweat. Cream. Isn't his wife just to the left of the stage? Like was she the one in the pink skirt? That's a yeah, that was pink her. skirt. It was, it was very like bright. It. It, was, it was extremely bright. Um and I was like, wait a minute, let me let me see if I can find this actual because I 
I don't know. It just didn't. It, it didn't. It seemed like there either either there was there was more that preceded it, um, or there was there was more to come after it. But I, I just felt like on its own, it was just obviously out of context, but just like way out of context. So um, I went sleuthing, and luckily I was able to find it. I'm glad and, you did that. Yeah. So if anybody out there has seen the viral TD Jakes clip, and you've reacted to it, do yourself a, a favor. Go out there and watch the whole sermon matter of fact i'll link it i will actually link it to this episode and i will even link it from the point at which uh the the clip starts and then you can watch probably like probably like 10 15 minutes after that if you got time because that's the thing about this the society it's, just, it's just such a micro society where you only can uh consume a small amount of um information at a at a time so um, our camera just overheated. That's interesting. We've only been recording. We haven't been recording, and now it must be warm in here. Um, I'm comfortable. Yeah. So we're at an hour, and I told myself I wasn't going to let us pass an hour this week, so that I could edit the episode quickly and get it up and it be ready. Because this would be a Thursday drop. Because our kids didn't want to sleep last night. None of them. Um, and we have to go pick one of them up because it's four twelve in the afternoon. So um, we will be back next week. Uh, I have we haven't decided yet if we're going to release an episode the first week of August because we will be taking um, should I say this publicly you know people say don't tell people when you're going to be well I've already said it we're going to be out of town we're going on vacation and we need it we have not taken I say this to everybody who I tell we're going on vacation Jessica and I have not taken a proper vacation just her and I the entire 12 years that we've we still have, been together. We still aren't taking one. No, well, I mean, in terms of it not being attached to like a work trip or somebody working while okay. they're on vacation or being somebody else's vacation. Or just, but we still haven't done yeah, just Yeah, we haven't done just us. us, but we haven't done just like a solid vacation. So I'm excited. Um, and uh, it's, could be well-deserved. So I don't, I don't know. Oh, she's early. Uh, I don't know if uh, if we'll be recording, so you may or may not get an episode the first week of August, but um, or or the second week, excuse me. Um, no, the first week. But we are going to have some guests in here. I think August is going to be a guest packed month, so we got to get some. We got to lock some dates down. We got to get some people confirmed. We got to decide where there one or two of them is going to be in person or virtual. But we're going to have them for y'all, and we got some some really really lovely fascinating people doing some really really important things um, one of them especially was actually a uh, served as a councilman here in the local town city excuse me so uh we are chomping at the bit it's a saying to get them i know on on rush vibes so that's but that's all i got cool. anything else that's all i got all right well that was we a heavier episode than I expected. Yeah. We uh we love y'all. We appreciate y'all for riding with us. Anybody who's here for Facebook, anybody who's new to us, please be sure to hit that subscribe button so you know uh, when our new episodes drop. Usually between Wednesday and Friday. We try to get them on Wednesdays, but our kids determine our schedule. Um, but we appreciate y'all and obviously anybody who's been here from day one. Y'all have a great weekend. Be safe. Um, watch out. I hear COVID's going back up. You never really know anymore. And watch out for them. Watch out for that monkey pox. Keep yourself safe. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. So, we out. We'll vibe with y'all next week. Yeah. Nothing but some growing pains. Nothing but some growing pains. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I done came way too fucking. Stop me now. I done came way too fucking. Stop me now. I done came way too fucking. Stop me now. I done came way too fucking. Stop me now. Stop me now. I mean